Hi, I'm Matthew Burchette, and this is Behind the Wings. Get it? Behind the Wings? Oh, come on, that's funny. Today's episode is on the A7 Corsair II. In 1962, the Navy knew that they needed to replace their aging A4 Skyhawk, so they came up with what was known as the VAX competition. Now, if you don't speak Navy, VAX stands for Heavier Than Air Experimental. Now, the big deal was is to keep costs down everybody that was a part of the VAX competition had to plan for an existing aircraft so that they could put it into the competition. Well, Vought came up with a chubbier and stubbier version of their awesome F-8 Crusader. Now, pilots had a much different nickname for this little guy. They called it the Slough, which stood for short little ugly fellow. The A-7 made its first flight in 1965, which put it right in the middle of the Vietnam War. This thing was chock full of groundbreaking technology, and a lot of it was in the cockpit. It, I even think there's a guy in the cockpit who might even be an A-7 pilot. Let's go talk to him. All right, so I'm here with Bob Beabout, who actually flew this very A7 with the Colorado Air National Guard. He also flew F-100s, which is super awesome. Bob, thank you so much for being here. So tell us a little bit what it was like flying the A7. You were telling me earlier that this thing was kind of heads and tails above the F-100. Well, yeah, you know, it didn't go as fast, but uh, this was uh, built primarily for uh, close air support and oh, uh, no with the with the uh, system that they had in here the inertial measurement system there we go <laughs> and it had all kinds of good stuff and the if you were delivering something it would do all the projection of the speed and and uh, release the bomb on uh, automatically and it just uh, it was very accurate compared to what the F100 was for instance which we had to use a lot of Kentucky windage. I don't oh, know if anybody yeah. knows what Kentucky windage is, but you know, you had to you had to make it judge if you were a little fast. It was going to go eyeball. long, and yeah, you had to do a lot of eyeballing. So, Bob, I understand when you punched out of an A7, you actually kept the parachute, and we've got it here in the museum. How yeah. cool is that? What happened was uh, it was a brand new engine that was in there, and only had five hours on it. And I got a warning light in here, and the next thing that happened was the oil pressure went down to zero, and then my wingman said, hey, you're on fire. Oh, and, that's and, never something you want to hear. And the airplane started uh, rolling over, and he said, get out. And when he, when he said, get out, I'd already halfway out <laughs> but, you know I reached up here and pulled this down over me and boom came out and, and uh, it actually that happened out by uh, out east here and I came down on the uh, in the ditch next inter to interstate 70 Whoa. And, <laughs> so I bet that was an exciting ride. Oh yeah, that was an exciting ride, and I didn't, I didn't get hurt. So That's everything, better. everything worked good. It w Bob, thank you so much for being here. It's been awesome talking to you. Um, you know, it was kind of a chore to get you in here. Are you okay spending the night? Oh, that's uh, that's all right. Yeah, I I don't mind spending the night. I'll sit here and play with all of these gadgets and, and dream again. Awesome. Well, hey, that's what pilots do. Okay, I'm gonna go do a walk around to the plane, and I'll be back in probably 20 minutes. Is that all right? Oh, that'll be fine. Yeah. All right. Thanks. We'll be right back. When we were in the cockpit with Bob, he was telling us about the groundbreaking armament system that the A7 had. And I'm standing right behind something that these guys carried a lot of in Vietnam, the Mark 82 Snake Eye. I'm actually standing behind the fins in the deployed position. They didn't look like this when they were on the plane. They actually folded forward. But as soon as it came off the rack, these things sprang out like this. And what it did is it slowed the bomb way down, which allowed the A7 pilot to get down low and slow and into the weeds and drop their ordnance 
right where they needed to in conjunction with that super cool bomb system. Now, not only did this thing carry Mark 82s, it also carried something even scarier. This may look like a bomb, but it's actually a cluster bomb. It's a CBU-58. Now, what does that mean? It means that this is actually nothing more than just a tube filled with 650 smaller bomblets, about the size of a baseball. And so what you would do when you drop this weapon, it would actually split apart and all those 650 bomblets would scatter around a huge area. It was a great way to attack troop concentrations or lightly skinned vehicles like Jeeps or trucks. The A7 could carry eight of these guys. That's a ton of firepower. You want more firepower, you say? Come with me, my friends. Boom! Oh, I mean, bam! You wanted more firepower, you got more firepower. That is the AIM-9 Sidewinder, a little heat-seeking missile, an air-to-air -air heat-seeking missile. Now, what does that mean? What it means is, is when this guy comes off of that rail, it's gonna home in on any heat signature it can find. Now, hopefully, it is the massive heat signature of that big jet engine in the enemy plane in front of you, because when it senses that, pow, no more plane. This unassuming panel right here actually holds something super scary, the M61 Vulcan rotary cannon. That's a 20 millimeter cannon that can spew out 6,000 rounds a minute. That is scary. Now, considering that you're only carrying about 1,000 rounds in here, if you really hold down the trigger, you're gonna go through your ammo really fast. So you wanna shoot in bursts. Now, let's go see what made this thing go so fast. All right. I know what you're thinking. This slough didn't go fast. Well, it didn't, but let's go see what at least got it off the ground. Here we are at the go fast part. All right, so we talked about it earlier. The slough didn't go that fast, but did you know that the Navy A7s actually were equipped with the same engine that the F-111 and the F-14 were? That's the TF-30. Now, there's a huge difference between this engine and those. Those guys had an afterburner. This guy did not, which means wah, wah, the slough couldn't go supersonic. How sad. But he could go 700 miles an hour, and that's still a heck of a ride. Another amazing thing, this guy flew with the Colorado Air National Guard. Bob, the pilot we interviewed, flew this very plane. You know, it is so awe-inspiring to be standing this close to history. This is why I love my job. Unfortunately, since we are at the end of the plane, we must be at the end of the episode. If you guys have questions or comments, hit us up on Facebook and our YouTube channel and we will be sure to get back to you. Until then, adios. Boom, boom, boom. Rubber baby bucky bumpers, rubber baby bucky bumpers. Hello? Hello? Can you at least send up craft services? <laughs>